So if you're a regular watcher, you know that I love getting all the rewards and all the bonuses that I can from different current accounts. Sometimes these are monthly bonuses, a couple of quid here, a couple of quid there. Sometimes it's cash back on some bills. Sometimes it's switching bonuses. So a big 100, 150 quid maybe cash bonus that you get for switching your bank. Loads of fantastic ways to make some extra money with very, very, very little effort. The problem is sometimes, in fact, most of the time to get those rewards, you need to have some direct debits coming out of your account. Now, we've all got direct debits, haven't we? We've got our general bills, the energy bills, our mobile phone bill, our broadband bill, one or two other ones come out that we all pretty much pay. We all know about those, right? We know we've got them, they're set up. But if you have more and more of these accounts, those bills don't get very, very far at all. In fact, if you've got the Santander 123 Lite account, which I recommend everyone has as their bills account, then you're going to be putting those main accounts plus your council tax plus your water bill into that account to earn cash back on it. So that kind of really brings down how many regular direct debits you've got to potentially very, very low numbers. So, so what do you do? No point setting up something for a service that you don't want to pay by direct debit just to get these rewards. You end up cancelling out that money you're getting. But I have got some very, very simple solutions for you. So that's what I'm going to get into right now. I'm going to take you through half a dozen direct debits that you can set up, which will not cost you anything in the long term. And they're either money that you will transfer essentially to yourself, or it's paying for things you're already paying for, but at the moment, you can't pay for them by direct debit. But I've got some workarounds. In fact, let's start with that one first of all, because a lot of you, I'm sure, have got services like Spotify and Netflix and Disney Plus and all these ones, and you pay for them every single month. But the way you pay for them isn't via a direct debit, it's via something called a continuous payment authority. Basically, you have put the long card number and the expiry date and the three digits from the back into that website and you pay for it every single month. It charges your card rather than taking it as a regular payment from your current account instead itself. So that is not a direct debit. That doesn't count for any of these bonuses, any of these offers. However, you can pay for those offices, those offers with the long card number from a credit card. Okay. So how many credit cards have you got? Maybe you've got two or three of them. Maybe you might be like me. You've got one that you use all the time on a regular basis and you've got another one or two which are older cards. You don't use them anymore. Maybe one of them's for traveling overseas. It gets used very, very rarely. If you pay for those services with those cards, now, unfortunately, you will need to have more than one direct debit in this way. You will need to have more than one card. So it depends how many you've got. But if you pay for that service with a credit card and then and I think you should do this anyway, set up a direct debit from your current account to pay off that credit card completely every single month. Well, you're essentially doing that. You are setting up a direct debit to pay off that service. So it could be you have got one credit card and all that goes on there every single month is Spotify at say £10 a month. But in the same month, that charge uh, is carried by direct debit to your current account for £10 a month. There is an active direct debit there for you. Fantastic. So you can repeat this for any of those services with a credit card. Obviously, if you have a normal credit card as well, there is a direct debit there. The hopefully, again, you've set it up to pay it off in full so you don't get charged any interest. And that is another direct debit you can add to those ones to be qualified for those offers. So that's a nice, really simple one. Another great one is PayPal. Now, you can do that same trick if you wanted to. You could pay for one of those services if they allow it. So Spotify, again, for example, I actually pay for Spotify via my PayPal account. And every month that gets sent as a direct debit to my uh, current account. So it pays it like that. But if you haven't got another service that you want to add to that, then you can actually use a direct debit to top it up with cash from your own account. So you can go into the app, really simple. You tap on your balance, you tip add, tap add money, you put in how much you want to put in. Could be a quid. Yeah, it doesn't have to be much money at all. Uh, and then you kind of select the account that you want it to come from. That's an account that you've already connected, already set up a direct debit mandate for. That money takes about five days, but it will transfer over. Now, that is a nice, simple way to have a direct debit. Again, it's only going to be one direct debit because you can't add it to multiple accounts. But the problem you have here is it's not automated. Okay, so you're going to have to go back and remember to do that month after month if it requires, and a lot of these offers require, an active direct debit. So an actual money going out via the direct debit payment method every single month in order to, to qualify for that reward. So just remember that, maybe put a note in your diary to keep going in and doing that again and again. Now, something else you might already do, hope you already do, but obviously it all depends on your circumstances, is you hopefully already donate to charity. And a lot of charities will let you do this by direct debit. So it might be a simple case of moving it from one account to another in order to meet the criteria for those rewards. 
But it could be you pay through different ways. You donate in other ways. Maybe you're donating on the street when you walk past someone. Maybe you do it via your payroll giving, via your paycheck. Well, it all ends up in the same way in the end. As long as you tick that gift aid box, which tops up how much money the charity gets, move that money over to the account where you need a direct debit. Now, obviously, you've got to remember, you've got to make sure that there's enough money in that account every single month to cover that direct debit to the charity. Um, and I would suggest, you know, you know, some people do this just for one quid or two quid. I think that's a bit a waste in some ways because there are costs associated with this for the charity. So if I was going to do it, I would do it how much you actually want to give. If you're giving that anyway, then you're just putting it in a place where in return, you might get a couple of quid back every single month as well. So that's a nice, simple one. So don't forget that. But anyway, these last ones are some of my favorite ones. And these are some really simple ones. I actually set them up this week to take advantage of a brand new switching bonus that has just launched. This account required two direct debits on the old account before making the switch over. Uh, and this account, this old account that I've got, I'm going to switch over. It's an old TSB Classic Plus. Don't use it anymore. It's a pointless account ever since they stopped paying interest on it almost two years ago now, 18 months, two years ago. It's just sitting there doing nothing. So I had to add two direct debits to active direct debits to this account and they had to be active before the switch took place. Now, sometimes direct debits can take a bit of time to uh, register on an account. They don't necessarily go through the next day or the next week. Maybe it might be, depending on when the payment date is, it could even potentially be two, three, four weeks away. So I didn't want to wait that long for that to happen. But fortunately, there were some ones that went on really, really, really fast. And that meant they should be active within the next week at the latest and I can set that switch to take place after that, because obviously when you switch bank, you can set a date for that to happen, at least seven days, at most 60 days. Although with this special offer, it was at most 30 days. However, I set these up and they are so, so simple. So I'd have two of them. One is a service called Plum. I've got a whole review on that. You can check out. I'm a big fan of this. It's a free service which will automatically analyze your bank account, your spending and your income and all this kind of stuff and work out how much you can afford to save every single month. And then via direct debit, it moves it out of your current account into your Plum uh, pot. This is an app, it's a fintech app, right? So it's connected via open banking, but it uses a direct debit to move that money over. Now there are different levels you can set of the money that's moved. You can go, I wanna save loads, medium amount, or I went for a very, very small amount. So it's just gonna hand over a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of cash. And this happens on a, I think it's a weekly basis. It might even be slightly far sooner than that. It might be four or five days. So I know that money is going to go out, be active and transfer over. And what's good about this, and similarly for the other ones I'm going to share in a second, you do not need to keep that money in that account. As soon as it's there, if you want to, you can transfer it straight back to that account. There is no commitment for that money to be sat anywhere. So that is a really, really simple direct debit you can have, which will help you, okay, meet the criteria on some of these uh, reward accounts or those switching bonuses. The other one I set up was via another fintech app, another money app called Moneybox. Now this is primarily used, I think, for a lot of people for investing. This is a way that you can, similarly to other apps, top up every time you spend money, it will move some cash into an investment pot. But it also has some savings accounts in there and it also has an easy access savings account. Now you don't wanna worry about the interest rate that it pays here. It's not relevant. You can get, if you want something for savings, then find a better savings account. I've got videos and articles that can take you through that. This is just about, again, moving your money somewhere by direct debit, where you can just transfer that money back. Now, this account with Moneybox only lets you make one withdrawal a month. So give it two or three weeks, and every month, move that money back. The minimum you can move over on the direct debit is two pounds every single week. And again, if you want a quick direct debit to be active on your old account before you switch it, a week is fantastic. Very, very difficult, again, to get something as fast as that set up on your account before you switch over. So I've got these two accounts set up. Two or three quid is going to go from the two of them in one week, two weeks, three weeks, maybe four weeks, depending on how long. I'll wait until I've got that cash from the switching bonus, which could take 10 days after that, that date. But at most, I'm looking at 10, 15 quid would be moved out of the old account into the new account, and then I can just transfer that all back takes no time at all. Now, there are some other savings accounts that you could look at that do something similar. They might have other restrictions. It might be that direct debit is taken on a monthly basis. It might be that there is uh, restrictions on when you can withdraw the money. But you look at the post office online saver that uses direct debits to transfer money over to the savings account. Uh, you can look at the charity bank, which has a notice account. You can look at the Ecology Building Society. There's a regular saver there. You need to check whether you can withdraw the money at all. And there are some credit unions that will do this as well. And in fact, you can also, 
if you don't not worried about getting that money back straight away and the penalties associated with that, you could look at some investing platforms uh, such as Vanguard. So there you go. There are a bundle, half a dozen easy to get direct debits. And some of those you can replicate and do again and again and again, which means you can get as many of those bank account rewards and switching bonuses as you want. As I mentioned, there are loads of more videos on my channel taking you through those. So if you want to find out why I think it's important you have multiple current accounts, check out that video. If you want to uh, find out the best way to manage those extra accounts when you've got them, not just the direct debits, but they also sometimes have requirements in terms of how much money goes into the account every month. I've got a video on that. And plus, I take you through all the different reward accounts to show you exactly how much money you can be making every single year. If you found this useful, if you've got any other ideas for direct debits that might people might be able to add to their accounts, please leave me a comment and let me know below. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button as well. My name is Andy Webb. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, cheers. And here are a couple more videos you might find interesting.